I think that's what I got caught on and couldn't get out <laughs> when I had to pull from the rear control arm, which, oh my, oh, oh no. Well, this is the transaxle, which just sat in the mud and, oh geez. <laughs> okay, well, the engine looks a little better. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And I am driving Apollo 911, my 1999 Porsche 911 that I bought with 243,000 miles on it. So it traveled the equivalent distance from the Earth to the Moon. And uh, well, it cost a lot of money to get it from 243 to 250, including a completely different motor. It has been LS swapped. So no longer does it have the flat six. But a good old American power plant there in the back, and I suppose I have been ruining Porsche 911s for a lot of years now, going on eight years, but for whatever reason, the most recent one with my off-road Safari 911 build and a little bit of bad stuff happening has made you all very, very mad, especially the Porsche community who wants to uh, sort of cancel me, which I'm kind of surprised because I guess Porsche enthusiasts haven't been watching any of my videos over the past decade. So I've actually written a little apology letter. <clears throat> Dear Porsche fans, I am so sorry about converting an undesirable beat up 911 Turbo Tiptronic to a Safari off-roader and then actually taking it off-road. Apparently, I'm supposed to stick to dirt paths that a stock 911 could do easily and not test its limits and make boring YouTube videos where nothing happens. I realized I already had the car sold, but didn't want to take a $15,000 loss without at least experiencing the fruits of my labor. Well, you know, not labor. I didn't work on it. Uh, stupidity at least once. I'm also sorry about blowing up a 240,000 mile 911 engine on the track. That was a big boom. And then LS swapping it. And then also painting another totally trash 911 Cabriolet with 150,000 miles plum crazy purple. My daughter picked that color. And sorry I didn't remove the engine and weld the coolant hoses together to correct a manufacturing defect before tracking my first 911 turbo. Yeah, I shut down the track for about an hour. Uh, but I wonder, is all this rage directed at me misdirected? Is your abuse towards me a product of the abuse you regularly take from the cars that you love? Let's start with the insane values on a car that they've really made over 1.2 million examples of that all kind of look the same. You are paying over MSRP for a 10-year-old common model and even more for the older ones that share much in common with a Beetle but cost $30,000 to rebuild the engine every 70,000 miles or so for reasons that nobody knows why. They just break and cost a lot of money to fix. You live in fear of IMS bearings and head studs and bore scoring and want to behead any owner that hasn't documented in a detailed spreadsheet every time their mechanic has farted in their seats. Maybe. Maybe you should stop worshiping this false god and go back to using and enjoying the cars first like I have, like people did decades ago, rather than coveting them as lifestyle accessories like you're some kind of Seinfeld or Magnus Walker. Sincerely, a complete idiot. Hopefully that apology is sufficient to the Porsche purist. And for the rest of today's video, we're going to check and see if I have indeed really messed up my 911 Turbo Safari conversion and uh, well, fix it up hopefully so I can sell and move it along and check on some other hoopties. But before we go take a look at the damage to the 911 Turbo Safari, I would like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. I was matched with a BetterHelp therapist a few years ago, and just having someone to talk to that had no connection to anyone in my life who could look at it all objectively and help me gain new insights was huge. I certainly have a lot to be happy about. I mean, look at all these hoopties, but like almost everyone, there's things that have been pretty stressful in the last year for me and other personal problems that I've really not known how to cope well with, and I think therapy has helped me a lot. So BetterHelp can help 
help you like it helped me by connecting you with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. First, you go to their website, link below, or type in betterhelp.com slash garage, then answer a few questions and BetterHelp will match you with a professional who has years of experience helping people with struggles just like yours. You'll be matched with a therapist usually within 48 hours. So if you get started fast, all from the comfort of your own home, visit betterhelp.com slash garage or choose Hoobies Garage during sign-up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. Now, let's go take a look at the safari and what I've done. Whoa. Whoa. Ninja! You're shaking your head. Why are you shaking your head? We just had this car here not too long ago. Yeah, it just came out and now it's back. And speaking of, look who's here. Jake! You getting air conditioning? And you've bathed since uh, we last saw each other. Yeah, you know, they do those mud like facial scrubs. Kind of thing. Very nice. So, yeah, I got Jake really muddy and I got this really muddy. And then, oh, I see. Yes, you've already labeled it. Um, so, I got stuck on something when I was off-roading. And then all the lights came on. It was running a little weird, like boosting strangely. And I sold it to a friend of mine. And then he looked and said that I crushed some stuff some turbo stuff underneath and he doesn't want it anymore oh, okay so um, he was nice enough to bring it back here mm -hmm. and uh yeah i'm just curious what damage i have done because apparently it's the turbo inlet pipe and i could have sucked in muddy water i could have sucked in a lot of dust i could have damaged the turbo i could have messed up the engine so uh hopefully it's fixable and i haven't blown what is this my fourth motor in a 911 something like that so well, I bought one, I guess, blown, but yeah. Well, yeah. let's lift it off and see. All right, sounds good. But otherwise, the suspension took everything like a champ. Nice. And it looks really, really good dirty. The paint wasn't nice before, but now with its full patina off-road, I think it looks great. It's probably worth more now looking like this, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, did you see the door sill? Oh, God. It almost got in. So it had this much water in it. It was wow. very close to going over an inch. It, yeah. Mm. It's, I know. It was really, really dumb. And I'm so sorry, all you people that were offended. I, hopefully it's okay. We'll I'll start from the front, I guess. We have some some <laughs> big chunks of mud here. Whoa. Here, I'll throw that in the trash. Sorry. Your floor. Your, your floor is just littered. But this bar... Looks like it did the job. It held, yeah. So we used that to pull it out once, and then I used the rear control arm the second time, and that's when the bad stuff happened. But uh, it looks like I got a trim piece here. Something was here that's well, no longer existing. Goes all the way forward, so. Ah, okay. No well, that's gone. Took a hit right here. Oh. So that got bottomed out. I think that's what I got caught on and couldn't get out <laughs> when I had to pull from the rear control arm, which, oh my, oh, oh no. Well, this is the transaxle, which just sat in the mud and, oh geez. <laughs> okay, well, the engine looks a little better. All right. Oh, I see what happened here. What's that? Okay, so that's off and it's rubbing against your axle because it popped off yeah. yeah well it looks like it's more than that it looks like it got crushed a little bit it's like it's bad. got pinched off so this is the inlet it's coming high to low right yes and the turbo is sitting low but it doesn't seem like this is buried in mud and water like uh, the lower part of the engine right but well, this is your inlet right i'm just saying i don't think it was underwater yeah. So oh, can we, we? We can remove it and see. We can see the impeller, see if there's any mud. In so that, yeah, that's just going straight to the impeller in there. Oh. We are so, so close to catastrophic failure. If I'd done that in a deep puddle. You want to push the pipe up real quick? Okay. Ah, <sighs> oh, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah. Here, let me put my finger along the bottom here. Okay. Still spins? So, 
Is just it? normal. It's still spinning really smoothly. Obviously that's gonna cause a big intake leak and trigger lights to make it run a little rough, but I think with a new and inlet it's... pipe, I'm probably in business, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're still gonna do a uh, compression check and a leak down test. Right, because I am gonna sell this thing and just to allay everybody's fears, We'll, and it's 146,000 miles. Might as well do a compression test and a leak down test and ensure that I didn't do any damage because after the off-roading, I drove this thing 30, 40 miles with that off through dust, through everything. So that should prove definitively one way or the other if I heard it. And maybe I should clean it up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of acting as like a secondary trans mount, you know, yeah. right? It's helping. <laughs> Hey, you got good impressions here. You can cast your own drive train. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> Interesting. Well, and I see you are hard at work on the uh, G55 AMG, which yeah. is one that I bought with a bad engine. It was using a quart every 200 miles or so. Wow. Yeah. Um, is this the old one? Yes. It's interesting. I guess you had to swap the oil pans because it wasn't a G-Wagon no, supercharged? No, one came out of the sedan, so. Okay. But if you look right in the center right there, there's a big score. I mean, the, yeah. rod, the rod is on the way, but... Oh, and it's way worse on that side. Oh yeah, this one is even worse. So right, right, on, right behind the rod, let's see if I can get it with the camera. Right behind the rod, it looks like a shadow, but it's not. It's a, just a huge gouge in the wall. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Well, okay. These line cylinders, a couple of comments were saying, you know, I'll uh, replace the cylinder liners. Well, they're, they're coated. It's uh, well, it not lined. Well, it's and all that. So it not worth it. You found this used motor for a couple of grand and swapping it in. And supposedly the same miles, right? Because this has 80,000 miles? Between 80 to 90. Okay. All right. But it came sans supercharger. Thankfully, mine's good. It's sitting on the floor right here. And then... Here is the new used engine. It spins, it looks really good inside. So. And I was really excited to see this because the V8s and G-Wagons were sort of an afterthought. Initially, they were just military vehicles with straight fixes, four cylinders, diesels, that kind of stuff. So when they engineered the V8s, it looks like some cob job custom thing because this motor mount here is way lower and it, off center from the other one. It's six crooked. It, it looks weird. Right, and then they notched the uh, frame right there to fit the V8. Mm -hmm. And we saw earlier, the engine actually sits in here crooked. It looks like it has a collapsed motor mount, but it's not. That's just how they engineered it to clear uh, the steering shaft here. And then a little cover for the exhaust to keep something from getting hot, I'm not sure. The, yeah. I guess boiling the brakes or something. The brake lines, yeah. Yeah. Very weird. Cool, I guess uh, you can order that inlet pipe and then let me know on the uh, compression leak down. Okay. And I didn't kill that car. I, I don't think so. Fingers crossed. Well, the Ninja did so well on this BMW as he is with the other cars that now it needs to be cleaned up to look as good as it drives. So at Van Gogh to get the Van Gogh treatment and there's something to be picked up in here. Stuart, yeah, how how's you? it going? Where'd you find this? Oh, an old man's garage going into the home. So yeah, 96 year old, had it for over 20 years. Uh, just one bad thing on it down here. Okay. Looks like he hit a curb or something oh, on the road. Yeah. So it got dented a little bit, but since yeah. this is a matte, you know, finish, it's not yeah. the sport package okay. car. I think it'd be pretty easy to fix, right? Yeah, and we can put the texture back on and get that repair. Oh yeah. And maybe yeah. do the other side so it matches. This will be a little, <laughs> darker than the other yeah, right we'll probably spray the other side too. yeah but other than that just the normal van gogh treatment and then okay your jag's working it is it is because this is the typical top end timing chains all the normal jag v6 stuff happened to you right yes it did still has a couple but you know it's with gotta the, go the way it is i guess with so. the big wang gang yeah uh, well you have something black and british inside of mine I right do, and do. uh it's, it's a cool though. car uh yeah. It kind of looked really hoopty though when I dropped it off, so I'm curious yeah. how you did. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for you to see it. Okay. Whoa. What do you think? <laughs> it looks like a $200,000 car again, not a $20,000 car. Yeah. Yeah, this it's thing came so from good. California. 
Okay. And it probably just sat outside and was just used like a normal used car for a while because right. it was, and the black just looked terrible. There's so much junk in it and the wheels were, Yeah. these are the same wheels, huh? Right. So I kind of overrid you just a little bit, changed the color. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but I did get some other opinions and we, as a collective group decided this would be the prettiest color with this black. One. Right, I did say to go gunmetal because the finish on the original, I guess it just looked too white for me or right. too bright. And I thought a little yeah. darker would work and I've seen some Bentleys with darker wheels, but this just, yeah, it looks correct. Yeah, this looks, uh, you know, it's a little darker than that silver. Mm -hmm. Out in the sun, we'll have to pull it out in a minute. It's actually a very beautiful color. Yeah. And uh, yeah, got all those fixed. So the all. front bumper had tons of grit and then had the front yeah. license plate holes, so those yeah. are fixed. Yeah, we got those fixed for you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And of course, the, the typical outside. It is super, su holy moly. Yeah. It looks like something nice again. Now, I'm not regretting my decision because you had the CL65 in here, you cleaned it up, made it look really right. nice. And I was keeping the junkier looking one, and now this is, I don't, this now, is not. Not anymore. Oh, I, you know what I like? You need to get a tail light. Oh, yeah. 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 See, when you stand right here, mm -hmm. it looks like you can stick your hand in it. Right. That's the way it should be. It was all swirled yeah. up and I mean, almost a matte finish <laughs> just by nature and people right. grazing past it in the parking lot, so. Yes. Yeah, let's look at the uh, two-thirds Bugatti here, the W12 yeah. twin turbo. The B oh, goes. There we go. Yep. Um, Whoa. So, yeah, it cleaned up really nice. This was, I don't know if you remember, was all kind of sandblasted. It's funny, mm -hmm. so it's right behind the grill. Right. It gets sandblasted. Yeah. So this was silver up to about here. The finish had completely come off. It looked yeah. terrible. So I, we, I, we just took that off, we painted it. We took all these bolts out. Because, you know, they, over the years, they tend to rust, so mm, very cleaned all those British. up, put those back yes. in. Yeah, we've had it all cleaned up, so. Yeah, very tight, engine. compact engine bay for sure. But will uh, bang your head if you're working on it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yes, it does have a near 90 degree yeah. opening. It makes it kind of fun to work on. Yeah. Maybe. I, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Yes, try and stick your hand in there to get anything. Yeah, it's true. No, it'll be... Uh, It'll be interesting. I know the 2006 is the first year of them being better, more reliable. Okay. Right. Now I feel a lot better for what I have into it. One with 80,000 miles. It, dirt, yes. it certainly looks it the part. Look like 80, 000, doesn't it doesn't Yeah. yeah. Well, let's back it out into the sun so you can see the wheels, uh, huh? Yeah, let's do that. Sounds so good. Okay, there's the shade sign. Oh yeah. That is really nice. Yeah, isn't that a pretty color? Mm-hmm. So. Yep. yep. Now, okay. So I think the deal was it's date night for me, so I'll get this to back to you tomorrow. Is your jack broken again? No. <laughs> But it would be nice to be able to drive one. I know there's no check engine. You're just expecting it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm joking. No, it's all right. You're welcome to borrow at any time. It does. Yeah. It looks so cool. So I waited on the tire dressing because uh, I always like to paint, you know, just to, to mm -hmm. clear out a little bit. So we'll wait a couple of days and then, um, you know, you can throw some tire dressing on it. Okay. So, well, should we go back inside and see the damage? Do you want to? No, but... Let's do they it. want to. <laughs> Whatever the bill is, I'm sure it's worth it because you made it look like a $200,000 car. Uh, so if it's less than 150 grand, then I'm probably sitting okay. Yeah. Oh, um, let me adjust the bill because I wasn't near 150. No, I'm just joking. It was 100? <laughs> yeah. Maybe 199. Yeah. Yeah, with all the house stuff going on, that's like every week or two weeks, somebody blows me out of water like that 10 <laughs> times more than what I think. So I'm I, like, I'm not phased anymore by it. Yeah. So. Well, you haven't done that to me yet. You're not, uh, you're not a murderous contractor, carpenter, painter, roofer. Right. So, yeah, what is... Yeah, I think uh, you'll be happy with that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Front bumper, 650 bucks. It was pretty chewed up. Yeah. Filled in the holes. Wheels, 185 a wheel for 740 That's pretty good. And then the dealership uh, recon, the detail, 325 which you went way over the top like that. That's not a normal dealer detail what you did. I but, know, uh, I know. Yeah, total $1,715. <laughs> that is very reasonable. Uh, yeah, so 
was five grand or so at the car ninjas to sort it out mechanically and another two to make it look this nice. So, but yeah, it, it was worth it. Yeah, so. that good guy this time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. But I do have a kind of a funny little thing for you. Hmm? This other bill. This is a Buick Park Avenue. Oh, the Park Ultra. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes, that is getting ready to be for sale. Yeah. So, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. does look really nice. Jake's taking some photos for it for cars and bids. I have no oh, idea cool. what that will bring because <laughs> I, I spent. Anyway, yeah, that's dumb. That's the first time I've ever surprised you with the bill. Right. I yeah, should have known that was coming. Kind of fun. Kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I'll pay Stuart, and then I guess we'll wait for the good news or bad news from Ninja on the Porsche. And I will not bring that to you to detail, because I... Riding off into the sunset with the Bentley and no warning lights, which is a miracle, it feels like, and looking so nice. It's just hard to believe that this thing's almost 20 years old and going into hoopty territory, because it didn't seem that long ago they were brand new and the cat's meow the latest and greatest now with the w12 being gone it's it's sort of a dinosaur it's old news i truly believe though there's not a better value exotic out there than a bentley continental gt even with the annoying maintenance gotchas getting one like this a few model years in that was reasonably well taken care of uh you can go wrong, but uh, there's less of a chance of going wrong as I've sort of experienced with this one. Thank you so much for watching.